Please be seated. So imagine it. Just take a moment to imagine it. You are finishing a long, long day, a tiring, exhausting day. You smell like fish, which is odd because you didn't catch anywhere near as much as you needed to. Your nets are worn, and you are finishing uh, stitching up those last few holes in the net so that you can call it a day, and then plan to wake up early, early the next day and repeat thinking to yourself, there has to be something more. You're faithful, you go to church, but there's something missing. There's some truth that doesn't seem to resonate. And you're convinced that God is more than you've been allowed to see and that God has more in store for you. But you wake up every day, you get in the boat, you cast your nets, and you come home tired. And then on the shores, there is this person, this person that just in the way that he calls you by name. How does he know who I am? How does he know my name? Just in the way that he presents himself, there is an aura that this person is more. That this person at very least is connected to that more that I am convinced is out in the world. And he calls me by name. And he says, I want you to follow me. Follow me. I want you to be part of discovering what God dreams for you and for all of your brothers and sisters. I want you to be part of building God's vision for the world. I want you to follow me. And as they drop their nets and all of the un unsurety that comes with that, of, uh, of, of, of leaving what they know, of leaving that steady income, uh, they drop their nets. Those voice, the voice that called them by name should resonate in our heads. God calls you by name and says the very same thing. Follow me. Follow me. And we have to figure out what we do with that. And if we were honest with ourselves, we'd realize that we follow so many things that we are indeed followers. No matter how much we think uh, we are a person unto ourselves, our thoughts are our own, uh, our opinions about the world are our own, we follow so many different things. We are affected by the people we surround ourselves with. We're affected by uh, the things that affect our security and our safety. We're affected uh, by the magazines we read and the, the images of beauty and success we see within them. We're affected by advertisers who uh, permeate every aspect of our lives. We follow uh, a certain worldview that's uh, affected by the news outlets we turn into, uh, by the people that we surround ourselves with around the, uh, the water station. We are shaped by so many things that pull us, so many cords in our lives uh, that shape the way that we see the world, that shape the way that we see ourselves, that shape the way that we respond to the world. We have so many cords, but Jesus invites us. Loosen some of them. Follow me. Follow me. Make my teaching, make my life, make my example the primary way that you respond to the world. And be aware that all of those other chords affect the way that you hear what I teach you. Uh, but prayerfully and intentionally, shape your lives to follow me, to follow my teaching, to follow my truth, to follow my love that knows no ends, that goes beyond death on the cross. Follow me. So follow me is our school motto. It came to us uh, pretty naturally, as we are St. James Episcopal School, uh, and it is printed beneath that last panel. Uh, those of you who enjoy the 815 from the side chapel, uh, you get to see it a little more clearly, but that left panel uh, where there's the two fishermen, you'll see right beneath it, follow me. 
It's printed on uh, our sweatshirts, our school sweatshirts that our fifth graders, uh, before they graduate, before they get uh, the day they, uh, the day before they go on their, their retreat, where they, they talk about what it means to follow, where they talk about what they've learned during their often nine years at St. James. The back has five for their fifth grade year uh, and follow me on it. Uh, etched in the cross that uh, Barry Hamilton uh, made for the school are those words, follow me. And when we have our moving up ceremony, our, um, uh, it was a moving up ceremony before it was also our graduation. Now that we have a fifth, uh, several uh, fifth grade classes that have graduated, uh, the fifth graders will hand that follow me cross to the fourth graders and say, follow me. And the fourth graders to the third graders and third graders to the second graders. And they hand that cross that says, follow me. So what does it mean? What does it mean for us and what does it mean for our children? I'd like to think that if you asked our children, and I, I will uh, later today, but if we asked our children, they would say that follow me means that we're called by Jesus to follow. That our primary identity is as a beloved child of God. And that God brought us into this world. God created us in God's image. God made us just the way that we are, perfectly the way that we are, so that we could live out of that truth that we are called to follow, that we can use the gifts that God gave us to live a purposeful life, a life of meaning and of concern for others and for all of God's creation. And how do we, uh, how do we reinforce that? We, every month, uh, we teach them uh, these virtues, these virtues uh, of how to be compassionate, how to be respectful, how to be patient, uh, what is love, what is kindness, what is friendship, what is grace, uh, what is responsibility, and where do these come from? That these aren't just things adults thought were worth uh, noting and worth living by, uh, but these are fundamental to the teachings of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus says, follow me, he calls us to live out of these truths, out of these virtues, out of these teachings. And so we ground them in the teachings, and we uh, spend a tremendous amount of time Showing children, when they show compassion, what it looks like. Uh, when they show kindness, uh, we celebrate that. Uh, when, they, uh, when they are respectful, that they put on God's glasses, uh, that they understand that respect comes from uh, looking at somebody again uh, with a different lens, with the way that God might see them. Uh, that they see themselves, that, uh, that self-love uh, and self-respect are principle to believing that truth that God made all of us in God's image and God looked upon all creation and said it's good and it starts with yourself. And when you can love yourself, then you can look at another person not as a competitor or an adversary, um, but as someone else made in God's divine image. And when we live out of that, it starts to shape us. And we realize that all of those other cords that are pulling on us uh, get less tight. And we realize that we can walk boldly into the world knowing whose we are and what that means. And we're preparing these children, whether they're only with us for a couple years uh, as they go into elementary school or uh, those that are uh, heading into the awkward uh, uh, season of middle school, uh, that they know who they are and they know why they are. Uh, and that, um, that allegiance defines them. Because in middle school, so many things will start to define you. Who you're hanging out with. What clothes are you wearing? Who are you dating? Are you making good grades? Are you one of the smart kids? Are you not one of the smart kids? Do you sit at the right table at lunch? Did something happen where you were embarrassed and you didn't think anybody would ever forget? And now with social media, it's 24-7. Are you uh, in the right group? Are you playing the right sports? What do people think of you? All of those things become defining things that, you're, you're, that you follow. How do you loosen those and hold tight to that tether that is your true identity? And that's another part of what I think we say and what we mean when we hear those words, follow me. When the fifth graders hand, them, uh, hand that cross to the fourth graders and the fourth graders to the third graders, uh, that part of that allegiance uh, to Jesus is also... Uh, the acknowledgement that we are called to be leaders, 
that we are called to be people who live in such a way uh, that those uh, younger than us or our peers follow us. They follow us because we are boldly following Jesus. Uh, and that confidence. And it starts with, um, uh, with us having our reading buddies where hand in hand we walk into chapel uh, holding the hand of a two or three year old who look at us with eyes as big as saucers uh, like we are a hero. And when somebody looks at you like you're a hero, uh, it changes uh, how you care for yourself and how you act in the world. And it adds a level of responsibility. Uh, when our fifth graders do their service project, uh, realizing uh, that they're not only uh, potential difference makers in the world uh, once they grow up, get their degrees, and go out and do something uh, meaningful with the world, but they are difference makers now uh, as uh, young people, as young children of God, doing God's work in the world. And as they share what they did in their service project uh, with the younger children, and their, the younger children's hands uh, rise up with all the questions and curiosities they have, uh, really just to be noticed by the fifth grader who's leading the presentation, uh, they realize that they are in fact leaders. So that when they step into middle school, they have the confidence and the assurance that God not only is, is pulling them, that God not only uh, is committed to guiding them, uh, but that God has equipped them uh, to be leaders of teaching and showing others by example what it is to follow Jesus. And us, as we sit in the pews, and we hear those words said to us, by name, follow me. I bet you think about those things. Think about what it means to follow Jesus. Think carefully about what it means to follow Jesus. But also think about this. Think about all the other things that we're tethered to. All the things that we think... Uh, we think give our life worth. All the things that shape our worldview, all the things that shape uh, our definition of success, our definition of self, and realize that the longer we hold on to and the tighter we hold on to all of those different cords, the less capable we are of following the God who made us in God's image, who shaped us and gave us all the gifts we need to live purposeful, rich lives, following Jesus and being fishers of people. Amen.